a disgrace. What right do they have to tax our podcast? I'm not paying them a penny. If we are to adopt the daily solutions as our podcast, then it must be under our control. Every single citizen deserves a right to freedom of intros. It's not right. No No institutions without without daily solutions. No No institutions without without daily solutions. solutions. What we should do is write up some kind of Declaration of Indepodcast. I would sign that. I'd sign it too. All right. Yeah, happy 4th of July, everybody. That's right. Welcome. My name's Ashkan. I am Graham Dizzle. Are you really, is that legally your name? I didn't, is this, who, this who, is who are you? This the episode, name I'm just saying, here? this episode's about honesty. And today's question is, to have or not to have <laughs> a shower screen in your float room? That is the question. Timeless. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it is nobler and <laughs> so um, shower screen. Yeah, what what does a shower screen what mean is to a you, shower, Ashka? A shower screen to me means like a TV screen in the shower, <laughs> so people can like watch movies and stuff. Is that what he's talking about? I well, I just or did, she, a, I, did a, I did a quick Google anybody. search, and what popped up was a bunch of glass walls in front of showers. <laughs> it makes sense. So TVs have glass in them too. So probably like a a, a screen to block water, and it may or may not also uh, project moving pictures. <laughs> um, so yeah, those little those little like glass partitions. Well, so here's the funny like it didn't even really matter what shower screen meant in this context because my answer is going to be the same no matter what. <laughs> well, okay. Which is no, I don't I don't think it should have a shower screen. Ideally not. Especially if the definition of shower screen is actually what the definition is, which is a big uh, glass partition. And there are cases where I could see, maybe which is what you're getting at, it would be useful, but, I mean, just in my mind, the less things there are to clean in any room, the better. And yeah. glass shows, like, any spots and, and little bits of salt so well. It just means so For much sure. extra time during a transition cleaning it if it's in To there. me, it's like a last-ditch effort. If you're just super, super tight on space, at a certain point, a glass partition is less annoying than people's clothes getting wet all the time because there's just, like, nowhere to put your clothes. Maybe some kind of, like, intricate cubby system or, like, a <laughs> hook and pulley sort of thing where they, like, hang their clothes up and they get just hoisted up to the ceiling. <laughs> rather than... it, yeah, okay, that sounds simple. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, really, ideally not. I, I would have to be... I mean, I have the same sentiment, which was, like, it, I'd have to be pushed pretty far to want something like that in my float rooms just because... It's super annoying. Like, we've had shower doors before, and glass especially, really just, like, to to make it look good, you really have to, like, spray it and squeegee it kind of every single time, or otherwise it just doesn't look really that nice in the room. Yep, and it's a really easy way. I mean, a big glass wall that just looks, like, spotty, especially flecked with little crystallized bits of white salt. It's, it's a great way to make it look like you didn't clean anything in the room, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and you should be really careful about... What like how it is connecting to the rest of the room? Like, I uh, if if you have like a real long section on the floor where it's touching or or the wall, like those kind of crevices are really easy places for like mold and mildew to build up. So I'd almost want a shower or a yeah, I guess a shower screen. I would almost want a shower screen that was like glass that kind of like you know maybe the hinges are connected and it has a little bit of a gap between. It and and the wall and the ground or something to make it so that there's not a bunch of like crevices or or stuff like that that are going to build things up over time. Yeah, when we had kind of a glass enclosure and we we had more than I guess what a shower screen is, which was we had glass walls kind of surrounding the entire thing with a glass door and all of those were framed in chrome, which in addition to the glass being hard to get clean, <laughs> the chrome was also really hard to get clean, and the unions where the chrome would connect to the glass would get funky over time and it would take even more time to just make sure that that was uh, kind of pristine. And I assume that's what you're referring to, Ashkan, is like anything yeah, that's really but, like but even, with Yeah, but even without the chrome, anything like that, I've seen I've seen shower screens in, in people's float centers that are just literally a piece of glass and that glass with a line of caulking like along the floor and along the wall. Mm-hmm. And still those areas are just really easy to have build up of, of stuff and they start to look bad and things. So if it's possible, sometimes you see that glass that can 
be suspended by just like the few connection points that yeah. it's connecting to the wall and it doesn't doesn't rely on uh like lying like standing on the ground for its for its mm-hmm. actual support like that sounds better to me than having to have like a line of caulking or something yeah yeah i totally agree and if you're doing that you obviously need some strong supports behind there you yeah. can't just suddenly screw one of those onto your wall and yeah a little gum stick in there so i mean and this goes for for really again anything you know we we very much moved to this idea of an open shower concept as being the best and it it comes down to wanting to be able to turn over the rooms really fast you know, when we say these things like, oh, well, it'll take that much longer to, uh, you know, squeegee down this this shower screen and make sure that it's all clean and nice for the next person. Like those are valuable minutes or even seconds when someone's going into the room and cleaning up, you know, like ideally that's, a, you know, it's, it's one of our sayings that we'll, we'll spend $5,000 to save five seconds off a transition just because that's that's how important it is when you're trying in this short period of time to turn over a room from someone else, get the next customer in, and have everything be both sanitary and and as visually appealing as possible. And if you're if you're thinking about a shower screen as something that's protecting the rest of your room from the water of the shower, then you're probably not thinking about your float room construction quite correctly. Like if anything is just like the only time I see its utility is you have a tiny room, there's just no way for you to like have a place where people can put clothes that it's not going to get like splashed by the shower, and that's these are pretty. That's a pretty small little like changing area. So most float centers have enough space to just that like the distance away from the shower is perfectly fine, and it doesn't get your clothes wet. Um, but if you're saying like I should have a shower screen because uh, you know I don't want the water getting too splashed too much further past that because then it'll hit my walls and damage my walls. Like you're probably going to be in trouble even with the shower screen. <laughs> <laughs> like the shower screen is not going to stop the rest of the room from getting wet and getting salty and and slowly getting damaged. So if you're thinking of it as something that's like kind of preventing you from having to do more waterproofing further in the room, that's I would say that's not the right uh, mentality to go into building your room. Yeah, maybe at best it'll delay some of the damage, but even then, I mean, treating the entire room the float tank is in is is pretty much a wet room and wet environment. Uh, beyond just the the shower enclosure, I think is is pretty key yeah so yeah don't our our opinion is don't don't have them don't have shower screens don't have shower curtains take out as much in the room as you possibly can in fact like the less that's in there the less there is to clean the less there is to worry about puncturing your walls the less there is to worry about scratching things or or just causing problems down the road you know like even putting up the the shower screen and and using a bracket going into the wall that's one more hole that you have to have in your waterproofing and one more thing that you have to then go back and protect and caulk all the time so you know for so many reasons just reducing the the number of elements that you have in your room and reducing the number of times you have to puncture a wall i think is is always worthwhile unless you're talking about tv screens in which case you know sounds kind of cool Agree to disagree. Agree to disagree. <laughs> I'm just thinking like full, flat, you know, if the whole wall is a giant TV screen. Really just blast people with sensory stimulation right before and after their float. It sounds like the the right setup. Well, if anyone out there agrees with Ashcon, <laughs> go on over to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast and, um, yeah, let us know. I'll be shocked. So, <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.